I remember standing in front of my high school, waiting for my ride. My after school activity was done early, and they were running late. I remember sitting on that cold, hard ground, feeling so completely and utterly alone. I remember seeing a piece of glass, the sunlight glinting off of it. I picked it up and I turned it over in my hand. It was the bottom of a Snapple bottle. I remember pushing up my sleeve and pressing it to my wrist, waiting for that sweet release of blood, wondering what would someone thought if they came across me, bleeding and unresponsive. It all seemed so easy, and yet my piece of glass was old and weathered by time and the elements, and all I could do were dig scratch marks into my skin. I can remember standing in front of the mirror thinking if I lost a few more pounds, maybe I could disappear. No one noticed me anyway. Would they even care if I was gone? You're down to a staggering 98 pounds. My nails stopped growing. My hair started to fall out. I eventually stopped talking and started carrying a teddy bear around school. It's kind of surreal when school calls your mom and asks to get you some help because you're freaking everyone out. It was at this lowest point in my life that I was lucky enough to come across a poem that would redefine my teenage years. A poem that I keep printed out and I read to this day every morning. And I'd like to share it with you now. Entitled, To the Young Who Wants to Die by Gwendolyn Brooks. Sit down, inhale, exhale. The gun will wait, the lake will wait. The tall gal in the small seductive vial will wait, will wait. We'll wait a week. We'll wait through April. You do not have to die this certain day. Death will abide. We'll pamper your postponement. I assure you, death will wait. Death has a lot of time. Death can attend to you tomorrow or next week. Death is just down the street. Is most obliging neighbor can meet you at any moment. You need not die today. Stay here through pout or pain or peskiness. Stay here. See what the news is going to be tomorrow. Grays grow no green that you can use. Remember, green is your color. You are spring. So last year when I turned 35, my life was redefined again. After a few years of struggling for answers, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and a sleep disorder known as alpha wave intrusion. So I have alpha awake waves where I should have beta deep sleep waves. So basically, no more REM sleep. I know what it is like to be so tired and miserable all day, every day. So tired that you wake, every, uh, wake up every morning and think to yourself, maybe I should call out sick today or work from home. So tired and miserable that you think, what if today's the day that I fall asleep at my desk or pass out at the wheel of my car? What if today is the day that I just don't make it through at all? I know what it is like to be that tired and that unhappy all day, every day. But I also know that we can persevere. We can reframe and choose happiness. So I'm sure most of you are perfectionists like me. And I know it can be hard. This is my kitchen the night, after, the night before Thanksgiving. While this may make me crazy, I went to bed because I know that good is good enough and that this, unfortunately, will be there in the morning. I'm sure you guys are a lot like me, too. You probably go to work early, you stay late, work through lunch, pick up some unhealthy takeout food on the way home. And since we're being honest, my guilty pleasure is Taco Bell. <laughs> so we'll probably go home, inhale our cold tacos, stay way too late doing homework, go to bed with indigestion just to get up to do it all over again tomorrow. But no matter how late I stay up or how bad an assignment is, I always start the next day with a happy heart and a smile. And the secret to a happy heart is knowing that good is good enough. So like my kitchen, you have to learn that good is good enough to let it go and give yourself the rest. It's OK. Next, I want you to give yourself permission, permission to be happy no matter what is going on in the world around you, whether it be negative news, maybe a sick family member, your coworker has troubles at home. It is OK to sympathize and empathize, but still be happy for yourself. It is OK to decompartmentalize. 
I want you to give yourself permission, permission to remove the toxic from your life, whatever that may be. I know my new favorite feature on Facebook is to snooze someone for 30 days. So while they may be my friend, I may not be able to take their political ranting anymore. Give yourself permission to mute those people. It's OK. And this is something that, if you're lucky, you'll learn to do in person, too. So while it can be considered rude not to ask people about themselves, it's OK to not engage these toxic people. So I know I used to find myself sitting in my car before work, dreading that one coworker. We all know that person who has to one-up you and complains about everything. So when I would go in and they would say, good morning, how are you? Now I say, I'm awesome, thanks. I go about my day. Because I know if I say, I'm good, how are you? I open up a dialogue of toxic negativity that will ruin my morning. So I choose to not allow it. It's OK to excuse yourself from a conversation and just say you can't talk right now and remove yourself from the toxic. I also want you to give yourself permission to have a safe space, a quiet spot where you can feel any and all emotions in. So for me, my safe space is my car. My commute to work is about 30 minutes. So I give myself those 30 minutes. If I'm angry, I blast some heavy metal and scream the lyrics. If I'm upset, I actually have a Mel Sappy playlist on my Spotify. It's OK to feel these emotions, to let them out. But after that 30 minutes is up, I leave it in my car. Do not bring it over your threshold. Do not go home. Don't go into work and complain about all these horrible, nasty things that have happened to you. Leave it at that threshold. 30% of us will be depressed in our lifetimes. But we can change this. In 2017, an estimated 1.3 million people attempted suicide that we know of. But we can change this. 90% is how our brains perceive happiness, and only 10% is hereditary. And two minutes of fake smiling can override that 10%. So think about that. You have 100% control over your own happiness. So even if you have to fake it until you make it, like I said, so even if you fake smile, your brain can tell. Uh, smiling is like yawning. So if your brain sees someone else smile, it will smile in return, even if it's a fake smile. So what we have to do is we have to learn to fake it until we make it, which is what I did in the beginning. I forced myself to smile, and I hated every minute of it. But eventually, you know, two and three people separation will start to see that and smile back at you, and you will make yourself happier. So it's hard because there are so many bloggers and websites that tell us you know, that we need to yoga more and exercise more, eat more salads, go outside, and the list goes on and on and on. I'm sure none of us have that kind of time in our day. So let's break this down into you know, five minute manageable pieces that we can do for ourselves anywhere that we are. So first, we're gonna set our intention. Second, we're gonna say something we're thankful for. Third, we're gonna take a deep breath. Four, we're gonna walk more. And five, we're gonna say something happy. So setting our intention. I used to set an intention that, you know, in yoga that was, I wanted to lose weight, I wanted to be stronger. I had a yoga instructor tell me that these were all very negative intentions. They were like body shaming. That we should work to set a positive intention because we're more likely to follow through with it. So now my intention every morning in my car is to be healthier, to strive to be a healthier, happy version of ourself, be it mind, body, spirit, whatever you need that day. So next, we're going to say something that we're thankful for. So even if it's once a week, email someone, text them, just say, I appreciate you. you know, thank you for what you've done for me. You know, a really great example is at work, we have a new program. And a coworker in another department was really great about getting me the info in the new format. So I emailed her, and I said, you know what? Thank you so much for making my life easier. And she replied, you know what? I was having a really bad day, and I needed that today. So thank you. So think of that two to three person separation and share that happiness. So next we're going to take a deep breath. So one deep breath will calm and center you. And two minutes of focusing on your own deep breathing will not only calm and center you, but clear your mind. So maybe you need this before work, before you walk in your front door, wherever you need it, take a deep breath, calm and recenter and clear your mind. And so next, we're going to focus on walking more. 
Again, we're not all gonna get our 30 minutes of cardio, our 30 minutes of yoga every day, and that's okay. Just strive for a few extra steps. Maybe park your car a little further, take the stairs at lunch, ask if you can do a walking meeting with your department. But anywhere you can get a few extra steps in your day, was well, good. And last, we're gonna say something good that happened in our day. So when you, you go home to your family and your roommates, you don't take that negativity over the threshold. Here's something good, positive that happened in your day. You, know, you got a promotion, got asked to join a project, someone gave you an awesome compliment. And ask your family too, what was the good thing that happened in their day today? So, you know what, some days, most days are awesome, and some days are gonna suck too, and that's okay. So this was me after my first rehearsal. It was the first time I drove to DC by myself. There was a presidential motorcade, so there were road closures. I couldn't find the garage, I'm running late. I finally find the garage, and I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna make it out of that garage alive. <laughs> after that long in the car, I was pretty bad with fibromyalgia flare, and I was in a lot of pain. And this is my super unhealthy breakfast that next morning. And while a lot of people might see this as a fail, this was a triumph. I set out what I set to do. So we have to think of every day as a triumph reset button. It should be celebrated and we should reframe. So I want you to remember it's a reframe. Give yourself permission. Smile even if you don't want to. And remember, green is your color. You are spring. <laughs>